Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I have a drugstore video today, which I'm really excited about. I've literally just been to Boots and to Superdrug, and I picked up a few new things, some spring launches, some things I hadn't seen before. And I thought instead of just doing a haul, I would put them on my face because whenever I buy stuff, makeup wise, I usually come home and try it all anyway. So why not just do that together? Spring is always such a good time for drugstore launches. I really enjoy the stuff brands come out with at spring. So the first thing that actually caught my eye with these it's a little Easter egg basket <laughs> from Real Techniques. Um, this was a little bit pricey, but it does have six sponges in it. And I've really become a bit of a convert to these Real Techniques sponges. I used to be all about the Beauty Blender, but I've been using a few of these recently and I like them. I like them a lot. And I had to buy these because look, you get a little pink one and a purple one. I was really happy about that. This is going to keep me going for a long, long time. And I also got this thing here, which I saw in Boots, this is a blatant ripoff of the Artiste brushes, which I have a few of, and I don't use as often as I thought I would, but I do like the concept of them. I think the reason I don't use them is I don't have the right size. This one kind of sits in the middle of the two sizes that I already have, and it was way cheaper. I think this one was maybe £10, something around that mark. So I'm gonna get this out. I'm gonna use this actually to apply the foundation that I bought. It's definitely a little bit more plasticky feeling than the Artiste one, but I for a fraction of the price I'm not complaining there but it feels super super soft maybe not as densely packed as the other ones but there's a lot of bristles here although I can kind of see a couple coming out already the foundation that caught my eye one of the new launches was from Revlon I honestly haven't bought anything from Revlon for so long I feel like they haven't had any exciting new launches recently but they have a ton of stuff at the moment that I was really kind of into this is the photo ready insta fix stick so it's one of those kind of twist up stick foundations. So I got this in the shade vanilla. I'm hoping that is the right shade for me. I tried quite a few. Okay, I'm just gonna whoop, go straight in with this. Draw some whiskers on my face. The first thing I'm noticing about this is it smells really strange. Okay, I'm gonna try and blend this out with this brush. Ooh, that's smooth. I like that. Um, the times that I do use for the cover foundations or stick ones like this. I have reached for my Artiste brushes. I think they're really nice to blend out quite a thick foundation because you can really work it in. Whereas a beauty blender or a beauty sponge, you kind of have to sit there pressing it for ages. But I like the way this is going. It's quite creamy actually, which kind of leads me to believe it's gonna come off and transfer, which a lot of full coverage foundations can do. But so far so good. I think the color is the right one for me, definitely. I could do with a little bit more of this. Like it hasn't actually covered as much as I wanted it to. Not sure if that's because it's going into the brush instead of on my face. I'm gonna put a little bit more just on the center of my face where I kind of need it the most. I have quite a bit of redness at the moment. I'm also gonna pop it on my neck as well because the same thing happens every year. My neck just doesn't see any sun at all and it stays super pasty and pale and my face just, it can't keep up. I do like this brush a lot for big kind of areas so places like the neck and um, my cheeks, I think it works really well on those. So looking at that up a little bit closer, I'm not really that impressed with it. I feel like, especially you can see here on my nose, there's still a big red patch left over. It hasn't covered up any of these little scarring areas that I have on my cheeks and it's definitely clinging onto my dry patches. I mean, I have quite dry skin, especially at the moment, it's very dry. So I was sort of expecting that, but actually I'm not Ooh, still got a patch there. I'm not that impressed by the way this looks. It feels nice, it doesn't feel heavy. Um, so perhaps I need to just pop a little bit more on, but then I don't really wanna be putting layers and layers of foundation on. So I popped some concealer and some powder and bronzer over the top of that now. And I do like the way it looks. I mean, my skin looks nice, it looks even and clear. Although I think that's a little bit more down to the concealer I use than the actual foundation. It still looks quite dry. And if I'm honest, a little bit cakier than I'm used to. So the second thing I have from Revlon, fingers crossed that I like this one a bit more, is also from this Insta Fix range, but it's a highlighting stick. And I swatched this in the store and I thought it was beautiful. It's a really true champagne-y kind of colour but it's not too golden. Sometimes champagne-y tone highlighters can just look a bit orange on my skin because I'm quite fair but actually I really like the look of this one so what I'm gonna do is just put this straight onto my cheekbones. I feel like these sort of stick products 
are best to use with a sponge as well, just to sort of blend the edges out so they don't look too sort of stripy. Okay, this I really like. I think that is beautiful, so summery. I can see myself wearing this with kind of no foundation or base on and just kind of putting it everywhere and looking very sun-kissed. About as sun-kissed as I can manage to look, which isn't a great deal. Okay, I'm gonna put some on here, a little bit down my nose as well. Let's just put this everywhere. This. I love. I feel like it's quite a sheer formula as well. It's not particularly pigmented in colour, it just has a lot of glow to it. So I feel like a lot of different skin tones could use this one. Looking a little bit like a disco ball, but what's wrong with that? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. So next up I have some brow products that I'm really, really excited to give a go. Um, these are from Fleur, Fleur de Force's collaboration with Eyelure. So I picked up one each of the two products in the range. The first one's a brow palette, so you get this highlighting colour and then two shades of brown, and I went for the lightest one. And then I got the Brow Tamer, which is a double-ended kind of brow mascara wand. One end has a colour in and one end has a clear gel. So I'm gonna get these out and give them a go. I haven't used a powder brow product for a really long time, but I've kind of missed it. I feel like you get a very natural effect when you use powders. This colour actually is perfect. So this is the lighter of the two brown shades and um, it pretty much matches my hair perfectly. It's the kind of shade that I like my brows to be. This powder is also really nicely pigmented, I'm noticing. Um, I'm not having to use a lot at all and it's really kind of filling my brows well. I'm gonna brush a little bit through really lightly. This is where I always struggle with powder to get the front part right. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the, the darker shade of brown and just run that through the tops of my brows. I like to have quite a lot of definition um, around the arch of my brows. What I'm really impressed by with this is the colour. I usually find it hard to get a good colour for my brows, one that's light enough but still brown and not very warm toned. I feel like a lot of brow products can run very kind of auburny. And this one doesn't, so that's cool. I'm also really intrigued to try this powder. Not 100% sure what to do with this. I think especially using a brow powder, this is quite good to sort of clean up any edges and lines that might be a little bit blurry. So now I'm gonna use a little gel. I'm just gonna run this through over the top. Which color shall I start with? Okay, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the clear gel first. Let's see how that looks. I'm a really big fan of clear brow gel. I think it's great for setting down pretty much any brow product that you can think of. That's the clear one. Let's try the dark one on the other side and see what difference it makes. So I think this is kind of designed to be used on its own as well. I like to fill mine in and change the shape of it. So I think this on its own probably wouldn't work as well for me, but you can see the difference actually. This one's definitely darkened up a little bit. I'm gonna put it on the other side now just to sort of even things up so I don't have one different kind of eyebrow. I'm really happy with these. I think for a drugstore brow product, something that really there is still quite a big gap in the market for, there aren't tons and tons of options when it comes to eyebrows on a budget. So I like these, I'm glad that these are around. I have a love affair with L'Oreal mascaras. I own literally every single one and none of them have ever disappointed me. I really, really like them all. So when a new one comes out, I feel like I am the person who has to try it. And these caught my eye because they are so cute. They're called the Baby Roll, Miss Baby Roll mascaras. And these I think are from the Miss Manga range, which I love. I think that's a really good one for serious volume. And uh, these are kind of funky. They have a pretty twisty, bendy wand, almost like a little helter-skelter kind of spiral thing going on there. So I was intrigued. This one is actually blue. The colour you see here is the colour of the mascara. This is a clear tube. It's actually called teal blue. When I saw this in the store, I kind of had a vision of me using the black one on my top lashes and then this blue colour on the bottom. For some reason, I just thought that would be an amazing idea. So I'm going to give it a go. There's definitely not as much product on the brush as I thought there would be. Um, compared to the original Miss Manga, which is just so, so thick and full of product. But it's still very kind of thickening. It's giving a lot of um, thickness and body to my lashes. Okay, so that's one coat, if you can see the difference. Um, I think that's actually pretty intense. Let's put some more on. Why not? This is where I'm starting to notice it's clumping a little bit, just at the tops of my lashes. Let's put some of this on the other side as well. So, first impressions on this. I think it is very... Very intense. Um, not everybody's gonna love this, I can say that for sure. I really like it though. I like this kind of look when it comes to my lashes. I think people with shorter lashes who really struggle to build up volume would love this. Let's try this. <laughs> the colour of this is amazing. It's so pigmented. It's not kind of wishy-washy like some coloured mascaras can be. It's really, really bright and really, really intense. 
I don't hate this. I actually kind of love it. If you're somebody that kind of shies away from bright things, bright eyeshadows, but you want to inject a bit of colour into your makeup, Bottom Lash Mascara. Give it a go. I like this. I do. So these are the lip paints from L'Oreal, the lip paint mattes. They also do these in a lacquer, but I just love a matte lip, especially a bright matte lip. I do already have one other of these, one other shade from the range, so these aren't quite my first impressions because I have tried them before and I do like them, but that one is a very natural colour. It's like a light nudie pink. Nude colours and bright colours can vary so, so much in the same lipstick range. And I thought these were so, so summery. I haven't really been wearing a lot of colour on my lips recently, but this pink just called out to me, as did this really intense fiery orange. I like these a lot because they don't dry and set down completely. They almost feel a little bit moisturising and they move around just slightly, not enough to kind of go all over your face, but they're very comfortable and they kind of feel nice to wear. Should I do the red? Should I do the pink? I really want to do this pink, okay. Let's just pretend that this all goes together and matches even though it doesn't. These smell like fruit punch, they just smell so intensely fruity. If you're after an intense electric pink lipstick, this is amazing. This is such a pigmented, kind of perfect, bright, almost a little bit of Barbie pink. Probably wouldn't wear it with this type of makeup look for just sort of every day, but with a little bit of bronzer and a tiny bit of mascara and then just this as kind of like the key feature of your face. I think that could look really cool as well. So the standouts from this makeup haul I think have to be this thing here. Um, the Revlon Photo Ready Insta Fix Highlighting Stick. I love it, I think it just completely changed the way my makeup looked. It's such a beautiful colour, so pretty, and I'm really excited to keep using that. I also really enjoyed using this brush. I think this is a really good little dupe for the Artiste brushes, so if you're yet to try them yet, because they are pricey, let's be honest, and they are a bit tricky to get hold of too. Um, pop into Boots, they had these just with the normal brushes. Don't forget as well, I'm uploading on Mondays now instead of Sundays, so Monday nights and Friday nights are going to be when my videos go live, so keep an eye out for that. Subscribe if you haven't already. So that is it from me, I'm going to stop rambling now. Stop talking, Alex, and I will see you all soon. Bye!